right time for the game let's see how this game will go so e4 e5 i guess this will be the italian game or the royal lopez but um oh now we see this coach wow so point to d4 introduces this coach right so the main move is e takes d4 in this position you have to take on d4 just to simplify the game and just for disclosure the scorch game and the scorch gambit are also included in my new e5 defense course so if you want to know how to play the scorch game or the scorch gambit like a professional be sure to check out my e5 defense course okay there we see knight takes d4 knight takes d4 is called the scorch game okay in case white played bishop c4 that was going to be the scorch gambit and i was going to play bishop b4 check and then put my dark squad bishop on b6 later on i discussed all these lines in my e5 defense course and the plan is to go queen f6 and knight g e7 then castle short or you first of all i mean develop your king's knight on e7 before developing your queen and then you castle short just to be fast in development you know play pawn to h6 and knight g6 later on and that's just about that so in this position my opponent just took on d4 with his knight and the move that i recommended in my course after knight takes d4 was bishop c5 double attacking that knight with my queen's knight on c6 and then i'll play queen f6 in case white takes to threaten checkmate on f2 see how that goes so bishop c5 first and then i expect white to take on c6 after which yep so and i should now go queen f6 threatening to checkmate on f2 and also attacking the knight on c6 ah now that's one move i don't like so white just played queen f3 begging for a queen trade i guess why do i hate exchanging my queen right in the opening stage the thing is i'm an attacking player but see as black you have limited options this is white's game in fact in this position d takes c6 is the top engine move and the other theoretical main line is b takes c6 knowing that if queen takes f6 happens white will just help you develop your king's knight which only favors black according to stockfish not to mention that you also have an option to avoid the queen exchange by taking on c6 with your queen but that's a little bit riskier and you have to know some theory which i'm going to show you at the end of this video so let me just go d takes c6 for now playing principal chess and i guess white won't even take my queen because that will put me in front of the game okay taking on f6 will make me be ahead in development theoretically speaking but don't worry if you're not a fan of queen exchanges i'll show you the queen takes c6 line where you preserve your queen because you're going to have your knight and your dark squad bishop already out so there we see knight c3 knight c3 by white you see they are not even taking the queen so it is at this point when you can save your queen if you want or just take on f3 and then mess up white pawn structure yeah that is also okay but I don't want to trade off my queen either. So I'm going to wait for white to take my queen so that I can develop my knight on f6. So let me just go bishop e6 to stop bishop c4. And then I'm planning to castle long here. So it's all about quick development in the scotch gambit. It's not even about how many pieces you have. It's about how many active pieces you have in the scorch gambit or in the scorch game. So there we see bishop d3 by white. I'm still waiting for queen takes f6 so that I can take back with my king's knight and then play knight g4. So castle long first, ensuring that I'm here in development. Still waiting for <laughs> queen takes and then knight takes f6, then knight g4. I guess white to now castle short. The advantage of developing your pieces very quickly is that you increase your chances to attack and dominate some important squares with those pieces. Besides, your opponent's position becomes passive. Finally, there we see queen takes, and now I should take back on f6 with my knight, yep. And then bishop g5 pinning my knight. So now I want you guys to see the best way to continue playing if you don't have queens on the board. So here, how do I unpin my knight? I guess I have to play h6 and then... Even if bishop takes, I can just take back on f6. Yeah, this is... Yeah, 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 yeah. At worst, I'm going to remain with a bishop pair. Theoretically speaking, 
two bishops are better than two knights. Of course, it depends uh, on a position as well. But in most cases, two bishops are better than two knights. If knight a4 just retreat my bishop, save my bishop pair. Because I need it for the end game. So there we see pawn to a4. Pawn to a4. I think the intention is to go a5 next. What do I do? I think let me play a6. So that if knight a4 comes, I can hide my bishop on a7. My dark squad bishop. Just keeping my bishop pair and, you know, continuing to attack. So this is what I'm talking about. So... Knight a4 is a move I'm considering. That's why I've played a6. If pawn to a5, I have bishop d7. And then bring in my h rook to e8. So let's see what white is up to. Okay, castle long, at least I have a bishop pair. And now I can go bishop g4 if I want. Oh, with castle long, my opponent hanged his pawn on f4. And this is what I was talking about in my yesterday's video, you guys. If you just play very well, I mean, principal chess, your opponent will blunder on themselves. You can see with your own eyeballs, I did not even do anything magical. My opponent just ran into a tactic and blundered his f4 pawn. So now I'm up a pawn and I have to save my bishop. Bishop e5. There are no pawns that can attack my dark squad bishop. So that's a very good outpost for my bishop. It's not only knights that get good outposts. <laughs> also bishops or any other piece that um, cannot be attacked by your opponent's pawns. And now I just have to play simple chess, you know, creating a battery along the d file. There we see knight f4 by white attacking my dark squad bishop, I guess. But I can just ignore that and continue with my plan. Rook h d8. If knight takes, I'm gonna take, yep. So it turns out that white can't even take any of my pawns. So word of the day again, if you play good chess, it's not you who's going to checkmate your opponent. It is them who are going to blunder or make a mistake. And there we see rook f3. Rook f3 by white, what should I do? I think it's high time for me to start pushing my pawns. For example, c5. Or maybe beginning with pawn to b4 first and then I put my c pawn on c4. Let Oh, I'm running low on time again. Why am I so bad with time management? I think due to the interest of time, let me just play c5 here. What else can I do? I mean, if b4, I plan to go pawn to b5, sacrificing my c pawn and then play rook c6. So there we see b3 first, but I can still go pawn to b4 i mean pawn to b5 i think so yep pawn to b5 next c4 is coming so when there are no queens on the board you need to start calculating the available squares so like i'm doing with my arrows here i'm trying to find a way of putting my king on a3 after pawn to c4 there we see rook h f1 but i can still go uh, pawn to c4 i guess yep let me try that c4 if pawn takes i'll take back with my pawn and go rook b6 check and then start advancing my a pawn this is how we create strategies by the way i'm not worried about time or my clock because there is an increment of three seconds i guess this is a five plus three match and see this is when I'm realizing how good my position is by just doing the right thing. I mean, I never planned for all this to be honest. Like for example, bishop e2, rook d2. Yep, let's go. So attacking the light square bishop now. And I'm ready to take on b3 or oh, the bishop, <laughs> the light square bishop. And there's even a very good tactic here, you guys. If rook 1, f2 is played, I have a back rank mate. Because my dark squad bishop is cutting that diagonal. And if rook 3 f2 is played, I have to decide what to do. Or maybe go bishop d4. Oh, there we see rookie 1. Rookie. Okay, that's a blunder, you guys. That's what I was talking about. If you just keep on making good moves, your opponent will blunder in one way or another. Look at this beautiful tactic. And I just saw it right now with my own eyeballs. Did I plan for all this? No. This is how we play chess, you guys. 
just keep on pressurizing your opponent, they will blunder in one way or another. Like in the words of Kasparov, if you consistently make 10 attacking moves, your opponent is more likely to blunder. Right, and that's what happened. I was about to go rook 8 d2 next. Anyways, great game. If you want to learn more about this coach, simply check out my e5 defense course. It's actually free at the moment. Of course, with a tiny token of appreciation for research, because I work with a team of FIDE masters and candidate masters, just in case you didn't know, when I'm building courses. And I will reveal them to you at the right time. Now it's time to do a quick analysis before I end this video. And be sure to hit the like button subscribe to this channel follow me on patreon which is my membership site where i post other premium videos and study materials and of course the full analysis of this video will also be added to my e5 defense course this is an ongoing course which i am building together with my team to make your life easier guys so seize the opportunity to enroll now before the price goes back to normal right so that was great even though i did not do great on time i just want to show you the other line where you don't go for the queen trade after knight takes and queen f6 so here white played queen f3 and i said the best you can do in this position is to take with your d pawn by the way almost everything that you can do is favorable for black in case you didn't know for example b takes c6 is the top played move in the masters database which is highly recommended and the thing is yes you are accepting to trade off your queen and take the chance to be up a tempo by the way you guys you thought i was kidding when i said most white players don't even trade off their queen and here is the reason why take a look at the masters database right now you can see that black has never lost a game after this continuation in case you are looking at pawn to e5 we always have knight g4 and we are going to be up a pawn that's a huge advantage but this can't happen they mostly play pawn to f3 just trying to hold on to you know their pawn but this leaves this diagonal to be very weak and the best that you can do here according to theory is to go pawn to d5 you just want to undouble your pawns along the c file and suppose white plays pawn to e5 by the way now you can simply go knight d7 try to get back your pawn if they go pawn to f4 all you're thinking of is this pawn right you are trying to break this pawn chain so you can go pawn to f6 if they take you take back with your knight well and good and the game becomes very simplified and boring but winning for black and if pawn to e6 is played you just go knight to f8 double attacking this pawn if they go pawn to f5 you're just thinking of this pawn right so there's a principle in chess which encourages to get rid of the base pawn to leave the one in front very weak so you go pawn to g6 here if they play pawn to g4 this now becomes the base pawn which is supporting these two pawns so you go for that base pawn and here white can't play this because we can just freely take that pawn and win the rook and let's just say if bishop e2 is played i'm just giving an example you can now take the base pawn so that after bishop takes you take the f5 pawn and now you can simply win that pawn like this so in all the variations this has been proven to be advantageous for black so don't feel jealous of exchanging queens you guys if you have to this is white's game and you shouldn't force matters again if you don't want to take with the b pawn feel free to take with the d pawn and wait for white to take your queen so you just keep on developing chess is not just about queens you guys but just in case you want to keep your queens on the board you can simply take on c6 and this is not bad but once you take with the queen the only advice i can give is just remember to play pawn to b6 supporting your bishop so that you don't lose it because in most cases white likes playing queen h5 check or depending on the situation queen f5 check and win that bishop especially if your queen goes away um, i mean i don't know or in other words after you take on c6 with your queen here is the only thing to remember if white plays bishop d3 a passive move you have time to fianchetto your bishop and castle long that's if you want to do that and then gambit this pawn to open up the king side you will have a great advantage but if white plays knight c3 there's no point to go b6 due to knight d5 and bishop b5 right so the move to remember here is knight e7 in short 
knight c3 equals knight e7 in this particular line where you choose to preserve your queen so after knight c3 you just go knight e7 stopping knight d5 right because if knight d5 obviously you don't even have to take your knight is safe so you can just cast a shot say bishop e3 i mean if you take you will lose your queen right so use your mind that's why you want to get rid of that knight first and after pawn takes now you go bishop b6 targeting this pawn and just wanting to simplify things say bishop takes queen takes now attacking this pawn so most of the times they like castling long and now this is when you play pawn to d6 paving way for your light squad bishop and you are completely safe you are now playing chess and nothing else right so this is just about today's study of course just like i said this is an ongoing study a very big course where we're going to be looking at almost all the possibilities that white players may play against your e5 defense and there'll be so many improvements and other recommendations obviously apart from the ones that i just showed you so stay tuned and make sure to get my e5 defense course on my patreon page or at www.casperchess.com right be sure to hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you're new and also share this video if you can to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one until next time bye bye